In response to months of continuous attacks from the regime in Iran against the State of Israel, right now, the Israel Defense Forces is conducting precise strikes on military targets in Iran. The regime in Iran and its proxies in the region have been relentlessly attacking Israel since October 7th on seven fronts, including direct attacks from Iranian soil. Like every other sovereign country in the world, the State of Israel has the right and the duty to respond. Our defensive and offensive capabilities are fully mobilized. We will do whatever necessary to defend the State of Israel and the people of Israel. Good morning, gang. Happy Saturday morning, if you could say that. Question for you. Who's running the country? <laughs> Seriously. A uh, little event go on yesterday that we kind of need to be prepared for. Could be the October surprise. Pay attention to your mailbox if you got teenage kids. Hmm. <clears throat> Yesterday, while Joe Biden is on yet another vacation up in Delaware, and Kamala Harris was at a Beyonce concert in Houston masquerading as a rally for her. Uh, it's funny, everybody went to go see Beyonce, and really nobody cared that Kamala Harris was there. Uh, <clears throat> Israel decided it was a good night. <clears throat> good morning for them, good night for us. To conduct missile strikes on Iran. Yeah, we knew about it. We were told hours beforehand it was going to happen. Iran knew about it because Israel, through third parties, told Iran it was going to happen. We told Iran it was going to happen. And yet, it was more important for Kamala Harris, the vice president, to be at a Beyonce concert and Joe Biden to be Joe Biden on vacation, you know, the only president in U.S. history who spent more time on vacation than he did in the White House. <clears throat> so last night, again, for us, because of time difference, Israel sent three waves of missile attacks on Iran, hitting Tehran, hitting Shiraz, hitting Isfahan, and hitting Mashhad. Okay. The targets were strictly military, no problem, okay? The first wave uh, targeted Ara uh, Iran's air defense system. The second and third waves focused more on their missile and drone bases and their weapons production uh, facilities, okay? Iran, of course, said, oh, gee, we shot everything down. There was small, you know, small damage or whatever. So be it, okay? You can't trust anything that comes out of Iran anyway. Who knows? The interesting part is a U.S. official said that the U.S. did not participate in any of the Israeli operations. But if Iran retaliates, the U.S. will defend Israel. Okay. Now, what that means, we don't know. Could it mean sending more money? Could it mean sending more weaponry? Whatever. Okay, we don't know this. <clears throat> in the typical Biden administration head in the sand ideas, you know, we ju we'll just ignore it like it doesn't happen. The White House comment, not of course Joe's, but the official comment. This should be the end of the direct military exchange between Israel and Iran. If Iran attacks Israel again, there will be consequences. We communicated that directly and indirectly to Iran. What consequences, Joe? What consequences, Kamala? Do you even know this happened yesterday? I mean, Joe, did you take time out from a nap or from eating ice cream to even pay attention to what's going on? Kamala, were you too busy doing a seal clap out there 
to Beyonce thanking her for actually having people come to maybe stick around long enough to listen to you. God knows they didn't the other day when Springsteen was out there. Though who the hell want to listen to Springsteen? Okay. <clears throat> Beyonce, I get. Not that I'm a fan of her music, but at least she's still relevant in the music world. But it's kind of funny because who's running the country? To me, this is eerily similar to 2016. You know, <clears throat> a week or so before the election, the Democrats parade out Beyonce, Springsteen. You know, did that for Hillary, too. Remember how that one turned out? I do. Okay. Hoping it turns out the same way this time. But who's running the country? Maybe Susan Rice was sitting in the White House. Maybe she and Barack Obama were the ones coordinating all of this. Because God knows the two puppets we have who currently hold the title of number one and number two probably didn't even know this was going on. So what happens from here? The chances of Iran not retaliating are zero. Just saying. It's not like after, oh, I don't know, thousands of years of Muslims fighting Jews that they're going to go, you know what? We'll be friends now. We'll, we'll, we won't do anything. They know just as well as anybody else does, both sides, Iran and Israel, that if they're going to strike any blows, they better do it in at least the next 10 days or certainly in the next two months. Because once the White House changes hands, so does policy. Trump isn't going to be on vacation all the time like Joe is. Trump can actually remember who's alive and who's dead. Trump's also a staunch supporter of Israel, like the United States supposedly is too. You know, it's kind of funny. You look at the Kamala Harris campaign and you go, this is kind of interesting. She pissed off the Muslims and she pissed off the Jews. How do you manage to do that? Pick a side. Okay. The United States has said for the longest time we're Israel's greatest ally. We've also said for the longest time since 1979 Iran is part of the axis of evil. But we'll try to placate them. You know, Barack Obama, let's send plane loads of cash. Let's let them develop nuclear weapons. Those are really good ideas. I mean, the, the biggest mistake America's made in the 21st century was electing Barack Obama. <clears throat> but what could potentially happen? Why is this a October surprise? When, I'm not even going to say if, Iran retaliates, the U.S. has already come up and said that we are going to participate in defending Israel. Israel's a little more important to the United States, to Donald Trump, to most of the citizens of this country, than Ukraine is. The people in the United States pretty much could give a rat's ass about what happens to Ukraine. Okay. Israel, on the other hand, a little more important. Joe's comments in the last year to Israel, what he the few times he's actually decided to weigh in on the issue, has been don't hit the nuclear facilities and don't hit their oil facilities. Why? One of after the air defense system, the first target I'd go after is the nuclear facilities. We cannot, under any circumstances, let Iran become a nuclear power. 
I mean, you don't give terrorists the tools to do their bidding. The oil, of course, that's Joe being completely selfish. You know, we need Iranian oil. No, we don't. Okay, as I said yesterday, we don't need shit from the Middle East. Okay, we got more oil than all of them combined. But that's Joe's diplomacy. Tell our allies to just accept their fate and let, let the, the backward ass heathens do whatever they want. No. If Iran retaliate, retaliates, <clears throat> what do we send? Troops? I don't know about ground troops. That doesn't seem to be much of a ground war at this point that we'd be involved in. It's not tanks, though it could be. But it's certainly sending our Navy in, sending our pilots in, whether they be Air Force, Army, Navy, Marine Corps, helicopters, planes, whatever it would be. Okay. It's certainly sending our programmers, our, our missile defense guys in. That puts our people in the line of fire. Do you think this war won't expand? <clears throat> Lebanon's involved, Hezbollah, you know. You've got half of all of Iran, obviously. You've got half of the Middle Eastern nations that are wanting to fight Israel at this point. Some of them are smarter and say, we don't want anything to do with this, but they're certainly not coming to Israel's defense. Israel's going to count on us. If Iran strikes back here in the next week or so, then the question is, oh my God, are we in war? Because Joe wants wars, remember. Kamala Harris wants wars. Congress, both sides, want wars. They get rich off of them. They don't care that women, children, young men, young women get killed at some far-off place in the world. They're getting rich. That's all they care about. They'd rather have a war than have peace. We have no leadership. And the ones that are at risk are you and me, and certainly our kids and grandkids. Because if war happens and it gets bigger, Israel may not have enough manpower to handle everything. Ukraine already doesn't have enough manpower to handle everything. Nor does Russia, but Russia is getting reinforced by the North Koreans this week. How long is it? Is it before January 20th? Till we officially send troops in whatever capacity. If it's in the next 10 days... Do we postpone an election? I know there's still people out there that say we're not going to have an election. Until the day of the election, I'm still at 50-50. Because I trust this administration as far as I can spit into a tornado. But my question comes back. Where is our leadership? Who's running the country? Because we, we certainly seem to be a ship without a rudder at this point. And hopefully, that's going to change in a week and a half. Pinball out.